Well, I'm J.B. Crum III. I have Conscious Millionaire. And um, some of the things I do is I have a couple of podcasts. I have a best-selling book. We do coaching. We do academy. We have the Conscious Millionaire Business Academy. And we do wealth products, all specifically for entrepreneurs who want to create high profits. They typically are either looking to break through six figures or they're looking to break through seven figures. And we're going to provide them the steps and the systems in order to do that. But the commonality they all have is they want to break through those barriers. They want to create the profits, but they want to do it in a way that's also creating a positive impact through the business they're building. The problem we solve is that most of them don't know the steps or how to organize a business. They don't understand that in order to get to six figures, it actually makes a difference how you even get there. So if you just kind of rocketed and kind of pushed your way there and, oh yeah, I got my six figures. But when you get there, you have no clear idea really who that market was. You haven't built a layer of a first couple of products. You don't have any systems in place for say how you market or how you sell or how you deliver. Because if you're on the way to six figures, you need to have those three systems already developed as you get to six figures. And then you're gonna add more systems, like when you onboard somebody else who's gonna work with you, even if they're a virtual assistant. Okay. You need to have a system for how you onboard them, how you train them. There's a system for everything. The way you go from six to seven figures is having a system so you can scale, but you need to make those decisions even before you get to six figures. From the earliest stage of what I'm working with somebody, we're gonna be answering specific questions because I'm gonna go, where do you wanna go? Now let's talk about the decisions about how you build that business. Mm -hmm. And what I find is that most, most entrepreneurs, especially in the early six, to the six, and even in the early six, typically don't even have a clear idea of where they're gonna be in three years. So we solve the problem of how do you organize the business to most effectively and quickly get to your financial goals while also adding more and more value, which I call positive impact, to your clients in a specific way that you're going to now be known to those clients. Right, well, we have the new Conscious Millionaire Business Academy that's coming out in the second quarter, and there's gonna be a section for how to get to six figures in six to 12 months. There'll be another section in how to go from six to seven figures in 12 to 36 months because we're going to give you the systems and teach you a way to think. And then there's a modular part to it all. And then there'll be group coaching that you can do as well to help you really get there on a weekly basis. So we work in group coaching. I do higher end one-on-one -on -one coaching with clients that are typically mid six to seven figures that want to double their business in 12 months. And then we create products that help answer the problems they have in putting those systems together and finding the right markets and the right products to sell them so they put the pieces together correctly. And so 2016, we just made a decision that we've Conscious Millionaire, Grow Your Business by Making a Difference, we brought it out. It literally became the number one book on all of Amazon in a very short period of time. We had over 50,000 downloads. It's been highly successful. It was number one in a number of countries at the same time. This year, I want to make the biggest positive impact that I can on entrepreneurs because my goal is to help a million entrepreneurs get to financial freedom so that they've built a company that supports them and their family and is creating a way for them to have savings and investments for the future. So in order to do that, I want to give people an upstart. So I'm giving you the book for free and I'm giving you a $97 training program that has videos on each chapter in the book and has a companion journal for all the coaching that's in the book. And I want to give that to you absolutely free. All you have to do is go to ConsciousMillionaire.com. You're going to love it. Forward slash my book. So it's ConsciousMillionaire.com forward slash my book. You'll be able to get the book. All we ask is that you just, we're going to ask you a few questions because we want to better understand who you are. Then we're going to give you the book and we're going to give you the training program absolutely free so you can get started moving in the right directions. And in the book, I have all the steps that I used when I went from 22 to 25 and made my first million. I'm going to tell you how I did that and what steps you ought to be taking to help you build your business. Yeah, I what really caused me was when I was five, 
and I grew up in a, a family, we were very financially challenged, right? I think when we say that, we all know what we mean. I grew up in a, in a little country town, two or 300 people. And by the time I was five, I had been well-trained and disciplined that when we went to the grocery store, I don't ask for the candy bar because we didn't have the money. And at five, I said, you know what? I'm kind of tired of this. And, and one day I, I literally, you know how when we're little boys, little girls, we're like, first of all, we believe we can come king and some queens and action heroes. And, you know, we think about life because nobody's told us we aren't supposed to think that things are possible. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what am I going to do? And I said, ah, I know when I grow up, I'm going to be a millionaire. And I went in and I told my parents and they were like kind of uh, alarmed because I grew up in a family that believed there was something wrong with having too much money. Like you weren't a good person. We lived across the street from the church. You know, we went there three times a week. So my parents are thinking, oh, I'm going to grow up and be a criminal because they don't think you can make that kind of money, you know, and be a good person. But of course, I went around and told everybody I never doubted it for a moment. And so my mind was thinking all this time, year after year after year, I'm supposed to be a millionaire. I'm supposed to be a millionaire. And that programmed me to get there. But three months after I had the four story home on the water, the Mercedes in the garage, there was a day I was looking out at the bay. It was a really beautiful day. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I said to myself, I don't even like myself and I'm not good at relationships and I feel miserable. And I realized at a profound level within 60 seconds that something was wrong with my life. Something was wrong with this picture. And then I went off on a spiritual journey. I'd go to sweat lodges. I went to Tony Robbins. I went to William Dyer. I read every you know personal growth book I could get my hands on. And what I was looking for was what I now integrate into Conscious Millionaire. And I didn't have a purpose. I didn't have a meaning. I'd figured out how to make money, but it then I had all the trappings, but it felt empty. And I feel fortunate that I made, as I say, just enough money early enough to find out that what we're told and believe in our culture in particular, that that's the answer actually isn't the answer. That the answer is doing well financially, but if that's all you do and you don't get the meaning part along with the money, you're never going to be deeply fulfilled. You're never going to fulfill the reason you're here on earth. So Conscious Millionaire came out of me thinking, I want to do a millionaire program for people, but I don't want it to be one of those smoke and mirrors. I'm just selling the box for a thousand and there's nothing in the box. And I knew that wasn't it. And I was living right out of Lake Tahoe for the winter skiing and went over to San Francisco, three and a half hour drive for the weekend, looked down, saw this brochure for the Green Festival, which I knew nothing about at the time. And I've been to it many times since then. Came back, I was in this beautiful apartment with a jacuzzi tub and everything. I get in the jacuzzi and I look down, I see the word conscious. And literally in my forehead, I saw the phrase conscious millionaire, got a tingling in my spine. And I said to myself, this is it. This is why I'm here. This is what I've been searching for. Because I'd go camping for two and three weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. What I call asking the universe, why am I here? What's my purpose? How do I take all these skills and everything that I've, I've accumulated, but how am I going to do something good with them? So Conscious Millionaire came out of this strong drive to want to help entrepreneurs make money. But I knew that there was a piece missing. And right. when I got the conscious piece, I went, oh, that's it. They're going to, I'm going to help them make it in a conscious way that's really about why they're here, but we're gonna put that with really strong, strategic, you know, process-driven skill sets that are actually gonna build a real business. It's not gonna be fluff, but on the other hand, it's not gonna be just the business without something that's meaningful, because I think Conscious Millionaire, you've gotta put the meaning and the money together. For sure. And that's where the drive came from, because I did it without having that. For sure. And I realized how empty it was. And I wanted other people to be financially successful, but I didn't want them to have the pain of getting there and go, well, wait a minute, something's missing, right? I want them to have the something missing along the way. I do. Actually, that's a great one. When I built, so I'm 25, I'm moving to this four story luxury townhouse, brand new, have the Mercedes, you know, and making as much as 100,000 profit in a month. Right. So I'm feeling pretty rich for being a kid who grew up fairly poor. Mm -hmm. Right. And the next year we had the worst recession prior to 2008, the country ever had. And I had a regional trucking line. I literally had to set all of the equipment down for three months. I didn't plan. I, think, I thought it was going to be a week or two because there was so little demand and so much supply of transportation that what people were paying per mile, because that's the way you look at that kind of business 
was actually, and I, you call that the variable cost. The hard cost is, uh, the fixed cost is all your overhead, your payments, you know, all of that. But just the variable cost to run the truck, pay for the gas, pay for the driver was more than what they were paying us per mile. Oh, wow. Now I'm a numbers guy. So I'm like figuring that out and I'm going, well, this sounds crazy because I'm about to lose a ton of money, mm -hmm. but I'm going to lose actually less money by not taking the business, which is a really um, sad place to be in. Let me tell you, when you're 26 years old, you think you're king of the hill. And I literally had to go to the banks and say to them, all right, you've got two choices. I was kind of, um, I'm trying to think of a polite way to say this. Um, <laughs> I had um, I had I had intestinal fortitude. We'll okay. say it that way. All right. I said you got two choices. You can either have all our equipment, which I knew they didn't want our equipment because they were not in the business of owning trucks and trailers. Right. Or I can't pay you the payments. So we got to talk about that. And I don't think I'm going to be able to pay them for a year, but I could pay you the interest because the interest wasn't that much. The payment was you know you'd usually pay for things in four or five years mm -hmm. in equipment. And so we restructured every loan. And then I went to the tires because we needed tires. And I said, I said, I know I can't pay you for what I owe you. But by the way, if you don't keep giving me tires, I never can. And I promise you, I'm going to figure this out. Now, fortunately, I had built in three years that we always paid our bills. So people knew that I was trustworthy. Right. And after all, they were in the tire business with a bunch of trucking lines. They were all going bankrupt anyway. So they might as well gamble on letting us have some tires. And then I went to the TARP people and I said the same thing. I figured the fuel people I couldn't get by with. I had to move out of my home, rent it out. But now there's a good side to the story. Six and a half years after I bought it, I was back living in it and it was paid for. So the story has a great ending. But I went through two years where I had to say to myself every day, being worth a million dollars on paper, which by the way is nice, but it doesn't pay for food or anything. I said, there's no shame in being broke. It's a recession and I'm going to figure my way through it. We didn't lose anything and we recovered. But I had to do that at age 26, 27, when I thought I was about to go make a million dollars in, in a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't. And I had to recover and I had to just swallow the pride that here I had, I was one of the only 25 year olds living on, you know, in this, this way, uh, you know, and, but I had to just say, hey, I'm going to do whatever it takes and nothing's going to stop me from getting to the other side and I'm going to barrel through and I didn't get lost in the emotions. I just said, I'm going to work my, my, myself off, let's say, and I did. And I was determined I'd find my way through that. And you know what? That made me, it does make you stronger, mm -hmm. right? Because what it does is now every time something doesn't kind of work out the way you think, because let's be serious, that's the way the business we're in. Not everything turns out the way you want. I have reference points that, hey, I went through that. If I went through that, this is nothing. You know, you just got to figure your way through. So it taught me to just be strategic, not give up and say, I'm going to figure it out and go be honest. I was honest with everybody. So if you take something away from this story, really the story I want you to take is that if you ever end up in a financial difficult situation, go be the one who's telling them before you can't make the next payment. Because now you've got negotiating room. But if you didn't make the payment for three months, now you don't. Right. Because you lost your integrity and honesty with them. Right. So go while you still have that and be honest and go, I will figure this out, but we need to talk. I am JV Crumb the Third, and I assure you I will survive always. <laughs>